Dear friends, dear colleagues, my name is Andreas Baumbach. I'm an interventional cardiologist in London. I'm here with Giulio Stefanini from Milan and Charles Kiriakakis from Cape Town, South Africa. The topic uh, of this facing COVID-19 with PCR video is thrombolysis. Uh, we want to provide guidance uh, for the management of STEMI patients in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and focus on thrombolysis. Thrombolysis has been brought back to our attention in this crisis, mainly as an alternative when primary PCI cannot be performed in a timely manner, uh, because at the height of the crisis, the infrastructure that normally uh, serves patients could be down or overstretched. At the same time, COVID patients themselves present with symptoms and ECG changes, and they make differential diagnosis particularly difficult. So the situation brought up a couple of practical questions which we would like which we would like to address when in the current scenario would we feel thrombolysis to be appropriate who would we thrombolyze how do we do thrombolysis and what do we do after thrombolysis first i'd like to turn to uh, giulio stefanini in milan the worst hit area of, of europe uh, Julio, can you tell us when in the phase of the crisis, which phase of the crisis did you consider thrombolysis in Milan? We considered thrombolysis at the peak of the crisis when the uh, healthcare system was so heavily involved that uh, we had to consider thrombolysis as an option for timely reperfusion in patients with ST elevation MI. Thanks. And Charles, what are your experiences with thrombolysis in South Africa? Thank you, Andreas. Um, we are busy preparing for the expected surge in admissions um, to hospital. We haven't quite yet um, reached the same levels of hospital admission as what you have met in uh, Europe or in the United States. Here in South Africa, we have a significant amount of experience in the use of thrombolysis within our different healthcare settings. So the big question now is when should we consider thrombolysis in our own practice? Uh, there, there are examples in China and India where thrombolysis has been made the default, uh, but we in Europe probably think that primary angioplasty plays a role even in COVID. So the question to Julio is, um, we've just completed a position statement. When do we think thrombolysis is appropriate? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, we still need to consider the uh, window of 120 minutes for timely reperfusion in patients with ST elevation MI. However, in the context of a COVID-19 outbreak, there might be an extra system delay due to the reorganization to face COVID. So when considering the uh, 120 minutes window, we need to take into account this potential extra delay and therefore consider thrombolysis if a timely mechanical reperfusion cannot be achieved. Thank you. Do we need to differentiate between COVID positive and negative patients in the selection? Well, this is very difficult since in the acute setting is almost impossible to differentiate. So the answer is no. We should treat every single patient as a COVID positive patient unless a negative test is available. So second question is, who do we thrombolize? How do we identify patients for thrombolysis? I'm saying that because I know you have experience with uh, patients going for an angiogram in the COVID crisis. Um, could you elaborate on, on the difficulties in differential diagnosis? It would be ideal to have adequate tools to differentiate since COVID-19 indeed might mimic a uh, ST elevation in mind in terms of presentation. We have a case series of uh, acute myocardial infarctions in Lombardy during the early phase of the outbreak. And as a matter of fact, a significant proportion of patients do not have a culprit lesion to uh, be treated. We're talking about COVID-19 positive patients. And therefore, a tool to identify which are true ST elevation MIs would be ideal. Uh, probably echocardiography could play a role However, it's very unpractical to do it in the acute setting. Third question to Charles, uh, how do we do thrombolysis? Uh, where would we actually find instructions if we had to plan for it? So the very first thing we need to do is we need to exclude any potential contraindications to thrombolysis, most importantly. 
Secondly, in terms of an, uh, um, an appropriate agent, we should be using a fibrin-specific agent, um, which can be administered by means of a weight-adjusted single bolus dose. And for these purposes, Tenect plays is really the ideal agent of choice. Um, and guidelines with, in terms of um, dosage are very nicely outlined within the ESC STEMI guideline document of 2017. Charles, how about uh, associated anticoagulation? That is uh, mandatory, the co-administration of an anticoagulant, and for these purposes, um, enoxaparin is the agent that is recommended, and dosages are very nicely outlined once again within the ESC STEMI guideline document of 2017. We have to be mindful of contraindications. How often do you see that in clinical practice? So interestingly, in my personal experience, we've uh, come across contraindications very rarely. And that may just be a reflection of the fact that in South Africa, uh, many of our patients who present with STEMI are a lot younger than those uh, presenting within the developed world setting. Having said that, I think the most important contraindications to thrombolysis would include previous um, stroke of unknown etiology, and then as a potential relative contraindication to thrombolysis, uncontrolled hypertension at the time of it, um, admission or presentation, which increases the risk for intracranial hemorrhage. And a question to Julio, in your experience, how about thrombolysis in the COVID scenario environment? Are these ideal patients or um, not for thrombolysis? Well, generally, this is not the ideal population. These patients tend to be older. Uh, they have a late presentation. They have concomitant infections and several several other contraindications to perform thrombolysis. So it's not the ideal population. And so if we have done thrombolysis, a question to Charles, what would we do after uh, we have a thrombolyzed patient? We have to very closely monitor them for signs of um, successful reperfusion, which would include the resolution of chest pain. And we have to repeat the ECG at at least 60 to 90 minutes post thrombolysis to ensure that there's been a 50% or more reduction in ST segment elevation. In those that do reperfuse, uh, we could go on to a pharmaco-invasive strategy with an angiogram being undertaken within a two to 24 hour period. And in those who don't, they have to be um, undertaken for immediate rescue PCI. And the final question to Julio, even if thrombolysis worked, do we have to do an angiogram within 24 hours as per guidelines or should we defer uh, in this crisis? If the system allows it, of course, we should follow the guidelines. However, there might be cases in which the regional healthcare system is so heavily involved by the outbreak that transportation and uh, an invasive evaluation is not feasible. And therefore, in these cases, we might consider to defer the angiogram. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, Charles. Um, I, I'd like to summarize um, the, the take home messages uh, really of our four questions that we asked. When should we thrombolize in the COVID crisis? And, and the answer is really, if we can't get a timely primary angioplasty, meaning 120 minutes for the patient, who should we thrombolize? Patients without contraindications for thrombolysis and looking for typical uh, STEMI presentations, um, being mindful that uh, in the course of a COVID infection themselves, there can be STEMI mimics. Um, how do we thrombolize with a fibrin-specific uh, agent uh, and not forgetting the anticoagulation, of course, and very good uh, overview of how to do it in the STEMI guidelines of the ECC, ESC. And what do we do after thrombolysis? Um, ideally, do an angiogram, even if there is complete resolution, and if there is no resolution, try to allow for a rescue uh, angioplasty. So these were the closing remarks. Uh, uh, thank you, Julio, again. Thank you, Charles, uh, for this exchange. I would like to point out there are other 
uh, videos on the uh, PCR website facing COVID-19 with PCR dealing with a STEMI. Uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, this. Stay safe. Goodbye.